My name is Sean Overton, and I'm turning this into a desert forest. I'm here at camp, and it's pretty common at night for me to see bats flying, but I know absolutely nothing about them. I have taken measures into my own hands. I have a bat detector. No, 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 that's not what Batman sounds like, but I tried. I am going to have a little adventure tonight. I'm going to use my bat detector. I'm going to see if we can set up this little night light to attract some bugs. And we are going to learn a little bit more about the bats of the Chihuahua Desert. I'm kind of wondering what's the best place for a bat detector. I have no idea. So I think I'm going to make a little windbreak with my packages. leeward side of the building and hopefully it minimizes the wind noise on the microphone. So what I have is this device and it just has a little USB insert that goes into the bottom of a donor phone that I have. I have an old phone that I keep out here for random projects like this with a cracked, newly cracked screen. Great. Looky there. Yikes. And what I'm going to do is pull up the app. Okay, let's start. There we go. Hey, there's a bat already. No matches found. <laughs> I gotta show you this screen because every time it gets a wisp of wind, it'll show a little bat icon. Yeah, so it thinks there was a... And maybe it's the guy talking here. It's a little early right now for the bats to come out. It, they usually don't come out until the sun sets and I will peek over my shoulder and you can probably tell the big ball of fire hasn't gone below the mountains yet. So as soon as that happens, we ought to see some activity pick up. We actually had a bat fly right in front of the game camera and it happened so quickly that the image took, but the video has absolutely nothing. When my kids were out here in March, we walked over this way right around sundown and they said they saw bats flying around, but I couldn't see a thing. Brandon pulled the SD cards off of our game cameras today and just by coincidence, we had moved the game cameras down into the canyon and we caught all sorts of wildlife footage. But I'm after bats, I really wanna see them. I wanna see if I can see something else besides Mexican free tail bats because part of what I'm doing on the Dust Ups Ranch should support local bat populations, not the ones that feed on insects like the free tails, but the long-nosed bats that feed on nectar rely heavily on agave. And I wanna show you exactly how that happens. There's a stalk over here of lechuguilla that bloomed. I think it's called its inflorescence. This, what happens is agave at the end of its life it sends up this huge stalk straight up into the air. Bats feed on these things. This thing's dead. All of these seeds are good, but let me take a pod. Okay, so this is a flower. I just spread some seeds. And in this pod, eventually you get this, which are some very, very small agave seeds. The agave depends on nectar feeding bats in order to pollinate, but also the bats depend on the agave. Look, this is actually a stalk that's growing in real time. So this way you can see, this is literally like two days of growth. It's wild how fast this stuff grows. But in the Chihuahuan Desert, there's not nearly enough agave growing. So conservation groups are focused on increasing agave plantings in this desert which I happen to be doing. Now I'm doing it because it's part of my desert forest efforts and I think I can use agave as a silage, but I'm using different species. I am growing some Havardiana at home, which is a native agave. I'm primarily trying to grow agave Americana, which is native, but my main focus is agave Salmiana. So even though these agave are non-native, they're a type of agave a lot of these bats should find on their migratory paths. And the advantage to me growing a larger agave like this is that its pancas, the leaves, are way bigger. This guy was dug up last year and we unfortunately broke the root stock. So it's struggling because it didn't have any roots when we put it in the ground, but here it is nine months later 
and it's still alive. For not having roots, it's doing pretty well. I'm gonna go down in the canyon. I'm gonna take my comfy chair and let's see if we can't spot some bats. I'm gonna set up shop here with my back against the wall. This is not normally a place I would hang out because this is where prey lives, which means this is where predators hang out. I don't want anything sneaking up on me. But uh, I do need to do a little maintenance work. Brandon got those game camera picks. So we're gonna replace the SD card on this. I'm gonna walk over and go replace his as well. And I messed up because I didn't bring my second phone, which I guess it doesn't matter because the thermal camera wasn't picking up anything in flight anyway. So I don't think it's gonna help me with bats. It would have been nice to scan for predators, but I'll be fine. I'm ready. Let's go do the other SD card before it gets dark. And what I'm really excited about at the moment is that sunset beaming off the cliff. I love this canyon. I still can't get over the fact that I own a piece of this. It seems kind of ridiculous. Like there's the idea of owning land and then there's land that's extra special. This feels extra special. Huh, do y'all see that niche in the cave? That seems like it would be a great place for bats to roost. I'm gonna go check that out after I do the SD card. Let's do this real fast and go see if, maybe we can find a roost. I obviously don't wanna to get too close. I don't wanna get some highly exotic disease, which is uh, when I was talking to Danny, the bat expert, he was saying, you really, really, really do not wanna get close to bats. I didn't know that was there. Let's go see if we can get kind of little crevices or nooks and crannies in the cave wall. You can see one up there, not very deep. And there's one over there where that acacia is growing out of the side of the cliff. I think it's so interesting that I have so much trouble getting seeds to germinate. And then these acacias literally grow on the side of the wall in almost in pure clay with rocks mixed in. Look at that thing. That thing's huge. There it is. Like there's these little sections in the, ca in the canyon wall that are cut out. I don't even know what to expect. Like if bats were in this little cave would I see them hanging upside down? Okay, I'm gonna lift the tripod as high as I can. Hopefully you're relatively close and get a better shot and a better view than I got. If y'all remember the tire experiment episode from a month ago, I talked about how I needed to seriously consider quitting if the tree germinations weren't coming along. And you can imagine the amount of stress and anxiety that brings and how that affects my sleep. Because when you're not sleeping, the stress compounds and it just gets worse and worse and worse. That's when I found Dream, today's sponsor. Beam creates supplements with zero compromises. They're science-based blends that taste amazing and most importantly, they actually work. Their team obsesses over every ingredient, every ratio, and every flavor so that you don't have to. I've been using their dream powder nightly and the shift is real. I'm winding down, falling asleep naturally, and waking up to literally dig in. Dream is now a part of my nightly rhythm. Get your sleep back. Go to the link in the description and use the code DUSTUPS at checkout for 35% off. Dream, calm nights, clear mornings. Thank you to Beam for sponsoring because without them, this project is not happening. I really appreciate it when you give my sponsors serious consideration because they are what makes this project possible. Take your sleep back, help dust up, help yourself. Please check out the link. I walked about five minutes to the south. There's a, a really large, in, in like, like a mini cave in the wall. I couldn't see any bats obviously, but 
now that I'm looking for them, I see these little impressions everywhere. Like I don't think they're big enough for a bat roost, but there's probably one in this canyon. There are those that are big enough where you can see where erosion has just taken it out or whatever. And there's a uh, deep enough for not a like massive colony, but I think some of them are solitary roosting. I have no idea. Some species. Leave a comment. <laughs> but I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just excited to see if the, the meter will pick up any tonight. It's funny, it was barking at me uh, when I first turned it on saying I needed to do some configuration and it was showing bats right and left, which seems a little optimistic. Here's Nighthawk. Oh, I got a good view of one. Oh, there it is. It's, now it's in shot. Oh, cool. I got a view of one from above looking into the canyon a few days ago. It was so nice. Yeah. I threw uh, some biodegradable trash I chucked into the canyon and it swept down to investigate to see if it was a bug. <laughs> and was right by it. That's so cool. And it was beautiful. I, I love a nighthawk. They're cool birds. I'm surprised you didn't bring a chair. Chairs are for squares. <laughs> I don't need no chair, huh? <laughs> There's one. No, is that a bird? That's a bat. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna try to point this camera way up higher because nobody needs to see me. Tri-colored bat. They are, that there, there it is right there. That bat there will take care of whatever they are. Nice, so that was a tri-colored bat. This is fun. There's, there's one. Here he comes. Cool, so cool. Boy, not the easiest thing to track. I can't even see it on the screen. I'm really hoping it comes out. I had the Merlin app on last year and a mockingbird was singing. I knew it because I was looking at the mockingbird and every time it sang a different thing, the Merlin app showed a different bird. <laughs> well, I mean. It also picked up mockingbird, but it didn't say, Mockingbird doing cardinal. <laughs> it just said cardinal. cardinal. That's pretty good when it's the mockingbird imitates the call so well that it fools AI. He's a good mocker. It's a good mocker. It's still detecting the bat, so it's around, it's within 30 meters. It's interesting, they fly out of the canyon and then they go south. A canyon bat. Uh, hopefully you can see it against the sky. I can hear it chirping. There's another one. There's two right now. He is right next to us. Tricolored bat. Danny asked about him and his research team maybe coming out at some point. I told him, dude, I would love to have biologists and scientists come out like oh you mean i get a private tour of uh with bat experts while we look at bats yes please i expected this to be enjoyable i'm actually having fun though it's different like i thought oh, i'd finish this and say oh this is cool this is like this is really fun it helps that it's an absolutely ideal evening that does help yeah california myotis i just picked it up again I can see three bats. Yeah. Four. Yeah, I got them. I just think it's so cool that they fly, like the different species fly at different altitudes that we see some darting in between the trees and others are 100 feet up. Big one, huh? That uh, is an enormous bat. It is an Arizona myotis or a pallid bat. A pallid, oh cool. So it's gonna be uh, pale, I assume. Yuma myotis. Where is it? We are apparently in the most, uh, Wow, right by your face. Whoa, wow. Holy cow, that was huge. Apparently it's the most biodiverse desert in the hemisphere. Yes. So, not surprised to see a lot of different kinds. Different kinds of things, all the time. All the time. Whoa, wow. Gray myotis, it's another one. There it is. Wow. 
I don't even know how many bats we've identified. Seven or eight? That's crazy. That is so cool. I don't know how this is coming out on camera. If you're enjoying it and you want us to come back and do this and maybe have some like bright lights, so maybe, maybe it'll come out a little better. I don't know, but it really is amazing seeing a bat that's like this big fly right by your head. Shoot, if we point a light up at camp and bugs come, you can just put a camera on that. Yeah, I thought about Daniel's green light, but it's not gonna compete with this. Like there's just too many bugs here. It's true. We're gonna have to wait for that light to turn on. Let's go detect some bats. So here's the bat detector. Live mode, start. We're now recording out of the wind. I would say it's weird that I don't see anything in the air, but there's no birds flying either. So I'm hoping I can at least catch them on the thermal camera and then maybe get them on the GoPro. That would be a big win. When my kids saw the bats flying, they saw them really low to the ground. Most bats hunt while they are flying. However, there are some species that land in order to hunt and Mexican free-tailed bats are what we're seeing. Let's figure out what altitude they fly at. This is probably a good segment for me to cut in with info about the Mexican free-tailed bat. Altitudes from 10 to 1,000 meters above ground level. But they prefer open areas, and this is definitely... Oh, I saw something. Okay, the green light came on. Let's go turn on the GoPro. Well, the other reason not to do this yet is that there's no insects yet. This should be swarming. I don't know what happened. Well, actually I do. Last month, it was really, really hot and there were bugs. Now, considerably more chilly. It's about 20 degrees cooler. And so, no bugs. Let's also learn more about this bat detector. 30 meters, max 100 meters. So they're within 30 to 100 meters, let me see. It's been a while since we've had an ID. So I'm gonna stop this and probably go eat dinner and I'll pick this back up. Let's try this again. And now it's not detecting anything. Before it would constantly, stuff would be popping up every 10 seconds. I don't know what the different sounds mean. Yeah, we're not finding anything guys, so I'm gonna call it a night. <clears throat> Well, that was an absolutely amazing experience. It's now my priority to convince Danny and get some of his research team out here, which I think ought to be a compelling argument when we spotted, what, like 10 species? Mm -hmm. I've known how biodiverse the Chihuahuan Desert is, but to be able to come down here and experience it is incredible. I'm really thankful that I got to do this, and I'm thankful that I got to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.